Hey, what's up guys? Retro Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review the Ambernic RG RT handheld plug and play video game console. So I'm super excited because this, as you could tell, looks just like a Sega Genesis controller only. It's got a four inch IPS screen in the center and it's loaded with thousands of retro video games. So super excited to dive into this today. We're going to unbox this. We'll take a look at the layout and design of this handheld and then we'll give it a full performance test after we tour through everything that comes on here stock so we can see not only what we can get into, but how well we can get into it. So let's unbox this and get started. All right, guys, here we have the Amronic RG Arc D handheld game console, and I love what this looks like so far. So super excited to open this up. Let's see what we've got waiting for us inside. As always, packaged very nicely here from Amronic. So we've got this uh, foam sort of insert here. Here's the actual handheld, which, wow, this looks incredible very comfortable as well. I want to dive into this in depth momentarily, but let's see what else is included in here. We've got ourselves a USB-A to Type-C cable connection there that's going to enable us to actually power this and obviously charge it up once the battery depletes. We've got a micro SD card here. Let's see, we've got 128 gigabyte capacity here. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside because we're going to have to insert that obviously into the handheld momentarily. And we have a manual. Oh, sweet. We've got a screen protector under here as well as our screen protector kit. So this is going to be just wipes that we go ahead. One's going to be dry, one's going to be wet. So we can clean and prep the screen before putting on this protector right here, which does have a um, little plastic covering over it to keep it safe in transit. We also have our user manual, which I want to kind of thumb through here. And this comes in a bunch of different languages here. That's obviously the wrong language for me. But yeah, it walks through how to go through the different function settings. All the different ports are outlined over here. How you can use different emulators, the emulator hotkeys, because that may differ depending on which emulator you're using. Lots of information here about, of course, the operating system as well. But good information. We're going to go ahead and close that up. We'll put all this in here. And let's bring, obviously, the handheld back into the mix. All right, guys, here's the handheld itself. Again, this is the RG Arc D handheld video game console. This looks just like a Sega Genesis controller, which for me is absolutely amazing. I'm a huge Sega fan in general, and this one just absolutely resonates with me. So we've got our six button configuration over here, A, B, C, X, Y, and Z over here, laid out beautifully. If you're used to a Genesis controller, this is going to feel very familiar to you. Buttons are very responsive. They are raised up, so they're you know high profile here. Great action on there though. And what's nice is you don't have to push them all the way in to engage them. You can see the action on there as I hit it. Very comfortable, very responsive. We aren't in game yet, but so far so good. We've got start over here, select over here at the top. We've got that rounded D-pad. Again, very much like Sega had on their controllers. This feels like, honestly, as of right now, the best D-pad I've ever used on a handheld. And I'm not in game yet, so we got to test this out. But take a look at just how easy it is to navigate here. I mean, it performs essentially like an analog stick here, as far as I can tell currently anyways. I mean, this, when we power it on, it could be a totally different experience in game, but love how high it sits as well. You can see just glides effortlessly here. So, all right, we'll dive into this now up here at the top. We've got our shoulder buttons. We got our L1, L2, R1, and R2 shoulder and trigger buttons here. It's very responsive as well. Excellent action. Doesn't matter where you engage those buttons, which is something that I look for. I don't want you to have to hit over here for the button to function correctly. You can hit anywhere on here. So really great attention to detail here. Triggers as well, same thing. We've got two Type-C ports over here. One on the far left is going to be the one that you use your USB-A to USB-C charging cable with. We've got our mini HDMI port up here so you can connect this entire device over to a monitor or TV and play basically totally on screen and use this simply as a controller, not as a handheld, which is awesome. It gives you the ability to you know, play on a larger screen if you want to, if you're at home. Function button up here, power button over here, and then right in the middle, we have our plus and minus. That is going to be our volume control. Love that we have external volume controls on here. That's huge, especially with emulators that you know, you're just going to have naturally different volume levels across the board. We have speakers both here and here that face towards you, the user. Big fan of that because a lot of these have them on the sides or on the back side, which never made sense to me. Even if you have the best speakers installed on your handheld, if they're facing the wrong direction, they're not going to sound great. So love the fact that these are looking right at us. 
We've got our audio jack connection right here, so you can bring your headphones into the mix. And then we have two TF slots down here, so your micro SD card slot that's already in here is going to be your operating system. And then the one that's not in here is going to be our games. And we have that right over here. That's our 128 gigabyte card. I will make note of the fact that these are not name brand micro SD cards. So I always recommend backing these up and they go face up here. It looks like, and let's see how easy is it to engage? There we go. Took a little bit of effort there, but that's a good thing. You want to make sure that they're recessed in there nicely. And you can see here from the side that there's no edge of the micro SD card visible up here. And that's a good thing. You don't want to run the risk of just tapping it by mistake when you go to grab this and ejecting it while this is powered on. So really love the layout and design of this. It's super comfortable. The thickness of this is very, very nice for your hands. It just fits in here beautifully. And take a look at the back side here. There's not a lot of you know features on the back, obviously. It's pretty much blank, but we have these little indents here. And that gives you some leverage on here where you can just kind of place your fingertips in there or the inside of your fingers like this, and it just stabilizes the experience here where this isn't gonna slide out of your hands as you jump into your favorite titles. So let's power this on and uh, tour through what is included on this 128 gigabyte micro SD card. All right, guys, so here we are. We land on the apps page right here. We can go into apps if we want to, and in order to select what you wanna dive into here, you're gonna hit the A button over here. So we have inside here our setup. We can go in here to file manager. All of our different settings will be found within here. So we'll hit B to back out of here. Next one's gonna be our emulators. That's where you're gonna find all of our different game collections, which we'll dive into momentarily. We also have RetroArch here. Favorites, which you have to set up for yourself, add all your favorite games in here for easy access. Recent, it's gonna give you your last 50 titles easily. And then we loop back over to apps. So let's go into our emulators here. We have Atomus Wave, we have Sega Naomi, we have N64, Nintendo DS, Open Bore, PSP, Sega Saturn, we have this one here, which says Prince of Persia. Let's check out that. Uh, all right, so that looks like a port. And then we also have Sega Dreamcast down here, and we loop back up to the top. So we'll go through these one by one. Let's first go into a Thomas Wave here. Now, the only downside I'm seeing here is that it doesn't tell us how many titles there are for each of these collections, which definitely is an inconvenience here, but this one's easy. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight different titles here, and then you loop back up to the top. So eight in a Thomas Wave, we'll back out. Sega Naomi is gonna be another small one, I'm sure. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ones. We have Toy Fighter in here, which is one that resonates with me. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 as well. Definitely my favorites of the uh, list that's available here. We have N64, and let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, different titles in here for N64. So of those N64 titles, you've got some Doom 64, we've got GoldenEye, which is definitely one of my favorites. I'm interested to see how that's going to play with this though, uh, based on just the mapping of these controls. We're, we're gonna have to check out at least a couple of these. We also have Perfect Dark in here, which is another one of my favorites. Star Fox, we have some Zelda titles, of course. Wave Race 64, another one of my favorites. So pretty decent collection of games inside this collection, but we, you know, we don't have our Mario Kart 64. We don't have, you know, those big mainstream, um, super popular titles. GoldenEye 007, of course, is one of those. Uh, Perfect Dark as well, Star Fox, but no Mario titles. So worth mentioning, uh, Nintendo DS over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 different titles inside here. There's definitely some cool titles in here. Diddy Kong Racing is really the only one, actually Lego Star Wars as well. Those are the only titles I'm familiar with firsthand. Wasn't a big DS guy myself, but still some great options within here. If we back out, we have Open Bore. Big fan of this. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different titles inside here. There's some good ones though. I definitely like Open Bore. I'm very familiar with this collection. We'll back out. Next we have PSP. Now PSP, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 different titles inside here. They're good titles too. Uh, Ridge Racer is probably my all time favorite inside here. Metal Slug XX is good. Tekken five and six, you can't go wrong with. So I definitely wanna test out the performance of PSP on here. We've got Sega Saturn with just four titles in here. Street Fighter would be the only one that I'm familiar with. 
We also have, this one was just a port, but we have Sega Dreamcast. I'm a huge Dreamcast guy, and it looks like we have a pretty significant collection of titles. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. All right, so 52 titles in here for Sega Dreamcast. And now it's all starting to come together as to why there's so few games in each of the collections up until this point. These games take up a good amount of space. There's only 128 gigabyte capacity on this micro SD card. So this takes up the majority of the card right here. But I'm not complaining because I'm a huge Dreamcast fan. We've got Capcom versus SNK. Uh, two of those titles, Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, Dynamite Cop is awesome. Evolution is a great game. We've got my all-time favorite game, Gauntlet Legends, and I love this particular version. Now, notice that not everything is scraped in this collection, meaning we don't have the screenshots, the box art, the title, um, logo, all that stuff on the right-hand side. Some titles do have that, like this one right here. The majority in this collection anyways don't. We have the Power Stone 1 and 2 titles, Ready to Rumble Boxing is awesome. Sonic Adventure 2 is in here, Sonic Adventure 1, Soul Calibur is in here. We've got some Star Wars, Episode 1, some Street Fighter titles, Test Drive is a good one. Virtual Fighter is good. Lots of great titles in here. I'm, I'm really happy with the Sega Dreamcast collection. I think they probably could have balanced this out a little bit better here with just adding more titles for like N64. Uh, maybe add some PlayStation here as well because we don't seem to have any PlayStation. But let's see. I want to see if there's um, maybe there's some more stuff in the retro arc section. Let's see. Oh, there is. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's a big difference right there. So we have a Thomas Wave as we had before, and if we jump in here, I believe it's the same titles. We have Capcom System One, Two, and Three. Let's see how complete they are. Excellent. All right. So the game count is accurate here. This one will be a little bit shorter. Twenty nine. This one should be only a couple. Yep, there's four in here. We have Dreamcast, and Dreamcast looks to be the same exact list, which is as expected. We have Final Burn Neo, though, and there seems to be a lot of Final Burn Neo titles in here. I'm not going to count all of these, but definitely a, a fair amount here. We also have Nintendo Game Boy. All right, sweet. And WCW Main Event in Game Boy. That's awesome. Now, I don't know if we have Mario titles here. We were missing those in the N64 collection, so I'm just going to go up here to see if there's any Mario titles, and it doesn't look like there are. Okay. We have Game Boy Advance over here. All your Pokemon titles are in here. We see some Kirby in here. Sonic Advance 1, 2, and 3, which are my all-time favorite titles. We have some Crash Nitro Kart in here. But yeah, no Mario titles in here, which is, you know, getting to be pretty typical for plug and plays these days. They're trying to steer clear of that stuff, which I, I totally understand. Uh, Tekken Advance, another great one there as well. Game Boy Color, lots of great titles here. All the Pokemon games. So right there, I mean, you're getting your value in Pokemon titles alone. If you're a Pokemon fan, you're going to love this. Sega like Game Gear in here. Lots of Game Gear titles, it looks like. Not going to count all these. I wish it told you how many titles were in here, but there's no count on here. We also have MAME, and it looks like there's about 22 titles if those numbers are accurate. They appear to be in this one, but let's see. Yeah, so there seems to be numbers, and then it just gets wonky. Like, there's a bunch of threes here. So, unfortunately, I'm not crazy about the way that it's laid out in terms of the text, but it is scraped nicely, so that is a, pl a major plus to this. We'll back out. We have Mega Drive in here. So this is turning out to be a really awesome assortment of game collections here. MSX2 is in here. we got more Sega Naomi. This is going to be the same as what we saw previously, but we've got Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket. Let's see what we have for Neo Geo. Lots of titles once again, and I'm sure we have our Metal Slugs in here. We'll go up a little bit just to make sure. Eh, I'm not seeing them, actually. They're probably up at the top, though. Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to be in here. Um, yeah, see, that's what I mean. So you have alphabetical order, but then over here, because there's numbers in front, here's all your metal slugs. So they are here, but it's a little harder to find because the number's located in front. 
So stuff like that, I just it drives me nuts, but it is what it is. We've got N64 here, and it looks like the same exact game list. Yeah. NES, pretty stacked. Wow, over 600 titles. All right. PC Engine over here. Looks like about 59 titles. So we do have a, uh, original PlayStation, which is great. Now, the game count on here is going to be a mess because, see, there's numbers here in front of the titles. So we got Ridge Racer 4, but it says 7 Ridge Racer 4, 11 Dragon Ball GT Final. So there's no way to know unless you go through here and count every single game, you know, how many titles are in here. But it does seem to be pretty stacked up. I'd love for there to be um, the WWF SmackDown games in here, but probably would be awkward with these controls. So hopefully they added games that, you know, would, would translate over with these controls. We'll, we'll jump into Tekken 3 when we start doing our demos here to see how that is. Super Nintendo's here, Vertical Arcade, Wonder Swan Color, and then we're back up here to a Thomas Wave. So really stacked. I mean, I was honestly thinking it was worth it just off of these smaller collections with Dreamcast being the, you know, the focal point of it. But um, yeah, I mean... In RetroArc, we found a lot of additional collections and games. A lot. I mean, well over double or triple what we had just sitting here in emulator. So I'm going to jump into a wide range of games now. We'll test the performance of the RG Arc D, and we'll see what this is all about.
All right, guys, this was a real treat today. I'm a huge Sega fan, and this very much looks like a Sega Genesis controller right here. We've got the A, B, C, X, Y, and Z buttons here. Super comfortable. I mean, this takes me back to the mid-90s playing Sonic, and playing Sonic the Hedgehog on this was outstanding. I loved that experience here. The audio on here is exceptional. The picture quality is great as well, even with the later release titles. So you don't have to just play old school games like Sonic the Hedgehog on here. You could play Tekken 3. Obviously, that's not you know brand new by any means. We're not talking about AAA gaming, but you can play much later releases, and it still looks and feels phenomenal. It is a major adjustment to get used to playing you know, Tekken 3, for example, or Tekken 5, Tekken 6 for PSP on something like this, because obviously your button configuration is very different, but it feels really good. You can remap it too if you find that it's a little bit wonky. The only thing I wasn't a fan of was playing N64 on here. It's just too awkward. You saw me jumping into GoldenEye, which, you know, is a phenomenal game. But with this configuration here, it's just very awkward. It's hard to figure out what does what. It's playable for sure but it's not super smooth either. You're really pushing this to, you know, where it seems to be hitting a little bit of a wall in, at times. You know, it does lag ever so slightly here and there. It just doesn't feel like it's that smooth performance that we would get playing on an N64 console. The other downside is the D-pad here. While I love it, it's actually my favorite D-pad out of any old school retro controllers and on handhelds, but for N64 games, it's just a little bit awkward when diving into GoldenEye or something like that. Wave Racer 64, not a problem. I really enjoy playing that. It is a little bit laggy still. Uh, you could make some adjustments to the emulator, but I still think it's gonna fall a little bit short there in terms of performance. Safe to be said with PSP. I had a good experience jumping into Tekken 5 today and Tekken 6. I didn't have to make any adjustments, though if I went in and I adjusted the frame rate a little bit in the emulator, it probably would improve the performance slightly. Jumping into Ridge Racer, not a great experience there. That one, we would have to go in and adjust the frame rate, maybe tweak a few other things in there, and I think it would be more playable, but it's still not going to be perfect. So a little bit hit or miss with N64 and PSP. However, everything else performs really well on here. And I would, you know, I think anybody getting this is going to really be looking at like the Sega titles. Dreamcast is perfect. Uh, Genesis, Master System, or Mega Drive rather, all that stuff, phenomenal on here. So just depends what you're looking to get into, but at the time of this recording, the price point is under a hundred bucks on this. And I think personally, it's worth every penny. You get an exceptional amount of games on here, plug and play ready to go, but you're not gonna get those Nintendo games that I think we all want, like Donkey Kong Country. Uh, anything with Mario in it is gonna be left off, obviously. You know, that's to kind of sidestep some pushback from the Nintendo company, but you can add those games yourself if you want to. It's very easy to do that. If you're familiar with RetroPie, you're familiar with Botticera or any emulation platforms, adding games on here is a breeze. It's really not a struggle at all. So I definitely think that this is worth it. I'll provide you guys with some links in the description of this video, and I'll also provide one up here at the top of your screen. Depending on where you source this from, your price may vary a little bit, but it's still going to remain consistently under 100 bucks, and under 100 bucks is a home run in my opinion. Even if it was a little bit over 100 bucks, I think it's worth it. This is what I've been looking for for the longest time. Huge Sega fan, as I said, and having that six button configuration over here is an absolute home run, and that D-pad especially is phenomenal. Even for games where you would typically be using an analog stick, it really has the functionality of an analog stick at the end of the day with that rounded sort of feel and the fact that it's raised and you can literally just use it like an analog stick. So 
huge fan here. Can't say enough nice things about this. It's not going to deliver you know, enough power to get you into later release games, but it still gives you everything that you need for retro and more. So definitely check it out. Click those links. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of this handheld in the comments of this video. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you on the next video.